and welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, Tyler Kumio, and this is The Princess Diaries. It's currently December 21st, 2023, and it is the last day that I'll be in Washington, D.C. for the year. I'm so excited for 2024. I had a lot of the same goals for 2023, and although I did accomplish a lot, there's a few that I really wanted to do that I haven't yet done. So next year is up and it's stuck. For real, for real. One of my major goals was starting a podcast. And I was like, you know what? Before this year ends, I'm doing this. We're going for it. And I'm going in full circle, even if I don't have it all figured out. Because one thing that I really struggle with a lot is perfectionism. I've done it my whole life. And I'm actively working through it. Not as fast as I would like to. But I'm putting another nail in its coffin by starting off this podcast maybe not having it all together maybe not having the full script I'm not scripting this at all but whenever I first had the idea for a podcast I thought I had to look a certain way but I was like you know what I don't want to feel like a robot I don't want to feel like this is an essay this is not a class assignment this is just simply me sharing about my story I'm gonna be sharing my perspective on life and my healing journey about becoming a better woman a better version of myself but most importantly developing a stronger relationship with God building a relationship with God is the one thing that you will never regret in your life it is the most valuable relationship that you can have and the love the peace the joy that you will receive will simply just be unmatched and it's not possible to ever recreate that same feeling from anything that is of this world why did i choose the name princess diaries well <laughs> i love princess diaries the movie that's one and two after giving my life to god and developing my identity as a woman of god I just realized that it's a lot like being a princess. God is the king of all kings. And as his daughter, being adopted into his sonship, I am a part of his royal family now. And he really do be treating me like royalty. And I'm so grateful to be gang for real, for real. Like being a woman of God has been the best time of my life. <laughs> I've only been out here for a year and a half, almost. But the peace that i feel whenever i come to my father up above about just anything that i have going on like i love spending time with god and i used to really dread it i used to hate spending time like reading my bible i grew up in the church so i know all about this stuff i know all about going to church every single weekend and like just your parents dragging you but i'm so grateful that they did that because i would not be here if it weren't for that and just the impact that God has had on my life. I strayed away from the church, but after experiencing all that I could experience and realizing that it really was not giving what I thought it was supposed to give, I was like, you know what? Let me go back to my roots, child. What the world had to offer was not better than what God has to offer, and it will never be, but I had to learn that the hard way. But I'm back now, and I'm so happy that I made that decision on July 18th of 2022. It has been a really crazy up and down journey. I went through so much. Just about like discovering myself and unpacking a lot of the things that I didn't even know that I had to heal from. But whenever I first joined the faith again, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I didn't know that there's spiritual warfare. I didn't know that I was gonna have to give up all these things. But it's not even like a thing where you have to. You definitely don't have to do anything. God is a God of freedom. He would never say, you have to give this up or else. Like, no, there's so much grace here. There's so much love and so much like mercy and forgiveness for sure. What God did for me is he molded me into the best version of myself that I could be at this very moment. And I'm still not there. I definitely don't wanna come off as if I'm like perfect, I'm arrived. Cause y'all, I'm still 20 years old. I don't have it all figured out. Small disclaimer, actually big disclaimer. I don't have it all figured out. I'm not perfect and I don't want to pretend to be or to have it all together because although I definitely have taken on a lot of healthy habits in the last year and I've made a lot of positive changes to my life, I'm not 100% there, like I'm definitely on the way there and I'm so grateful, glory be to God, but it's a journey and the sanctification process never ends. It just began whenever I gave my life to God. So 
he just continually like molded me he changed me like a potter in a potter's house i love that analogy pastor sarah jakes roberts she's the one who first introduced me to like, that concept of god just like reworking you reworking the clay so that it could be a much better a beautiful masterpiece something that you would have never imagined before the things that he separated me from the people that he separated me from the habits that he separated me from were all for my greatest good even if i couldn't see it at the time god is so good and the way that i started off the year is completely different that i'm ending it off especially my relationship with god because i thought that i trusted god but i feel like he showed me that i really need to do a better job of just surrendering and allowing like kind of like free falling but knowing that at the bottom you're gonna be straight like god is like i want you to jump but i got you <laughs> and it's like I'm scared, God. I don't know what's on the other side. I don't know what's at the bottom. I don't know if I'll be safe, whatever, blah, blah, blah. He's like, okay, do you trust me? Like, I got you. Don't worry. I got you. And I feel like that's what I've been learning. Like, God really do got me through all of this, through this whole journey. He's got me. And I don't have to have it all figured out. He's not expecting me to be perfect. He just wants me to come to him. I didn't know that I would change so much. But all I knew is that what I was doing before was really not working. The lifestyle that I was living i was people pleasing a lot i had no boundaries i was just attaching myself to names that i had no business attaching myself to i used to think of myself as like unlovable unworthy not good enough and i lived with that identity for a long time and i operated out of that identity but after coming to christ he just exchanged whatever I had before thinking that oh this is good like I got it all together and he gave me a completely new caliber I took to God what I thought was good right and he's like girl this ain't nothing compared to what I'm gonna give you Zechariah chapter 2 I was introduced to this chapter or this book in general like Zechariah I grew up in the church and I don't even think that for one they were like oh look in the book of Zechariah or maybe I just wasn't paying attention because I used to do that a lot too but um, book of Zechariah it talks about how God exchanged the filthy garments of the people of Zion and gave them his robes of righteousness it shows his love in the book of Matthew it talks about the prodigal son leaving home and he wanted to experience the world so the father let him he said okay I want my inheritance early I'm gonna go out into the world and I'm gonna just have my time right he did all of that and he ended up losing his money, which meant that he lost all his friends and he ended up in a worse position than what he was experiencing at his father's house. So he was like, you know what, I'm going to just go back home. And his father did not say, you know what, you was out there in the world acting crazy, so stand on that. He wasn't like, no, you got to stand on that. He said, my son is home. We're going to throw him the biggest party. We're going to have a ball with it thank you for coming home i love you i've missed you so much he wasn't hateful he wasn't trying to get revenge on him like oh you left us uh, uh, uh you thought you was gonna be so good out there all that he wasn't rude about it he said you know what i'm happy you're home son and that's really what god did for me i went out into the world especially whenever i went to college bro whenever i came to howard university at the age of what was it 18 i think i was 18 bro I came out here and I was acting a fool, okay? I was doing whatever, but I still knew where home was at. I still knew that deep down inside what I was doing was not necessarily right. I just kind of didn't care at the time, but yeah, God is really good and I'm really grateful. I feel like the prodigal daughter who returned from the world and is back at home and is experiencing princess treatment, like God is not going to hold your past against you. He's going to look at the cross that Jesus died on, that he sent his son to die on and be like, you know what? I don't even see the fact that she was wild and out acting crazy. I see the perfect version of you. I loved you so much. Like, I don't see your sins no more. He took our sins and he died on the cross so that we could be in union with him again and i think that that is just so beautiful like so so beautiful i no longer have to feel shame or guilt about my past because that version of myself died on the cross with jesus whenever you're getting into your faith again it's really important to repent it's really important to pray and ask God for forgiveness also for the things that you used to do so that it can be pinned on the cross with Jesus. If you don't talk about it, if you don't like release that, it'll still be on you rather than be being included in the weight of the cross. To follow Jesus is to be a beloved son or daughter of God. 
and as a result you are a prince and a princess. A life without God is like living life as a sheep without a shepherd. We all have a shepherd, but which one is guiding you? Before I came to Christ, I was just really, really lost. I was trying to find myself, I was trying to find my identity, and I was attaching myself to things that I really had no business attaching myself to, but it made me feel accepted, it made me feel validated. Even if it was temporary, I felt like it was still better than nothing at all. This world can only really offer temporary satisfaction, and you can't live a truly fulfilled life with a bunch of little pieces of satisfaction. With God, he's like the missing piece. He's like the full picture. He's not a bunch of like little bits and pieces. Like we can get bits and pieces because that's the creation. But if you go to the creator, if you go to the source of all of the good things rather than going to the creation for the good things, then that's whenever you'll find an everlasting happiness, an everlasting joy, everlasting peace, all those things are only found in God. So if you want to avoid living an empty life, you have to seek after God first. It's the most valuable relationship that you can ever have. And I didn't know that for real until I experienced it for myself. And my mom would always tell me, like, Tyla, did you read your Bible? Did you pray? I just thought she was talking, like making a noise. But as I've gotten older and I was able to experience the world and what it had to offer for myself, not everything now, <laughs> not everything, but a lot of the things that I did experience that are like, you know, normal to culture and stuff like that, that are supposed to make you feel happy and all those things, it just never worked out for me. And not even to say that it didn't work out for me because it worked out for me, but it just wasn't the best for me. And I feel like I was just looking for something more, always searching for the next big thing that would just do it for me. But nothing did it for me until I found God. And I'm like, what is this? And Aladdin, whenever he's like, a whole new world. <laughs> coming to God, it's like coming to a whole new world. Like, wow, life could really be so peaceful. Life could really be so amazing. The sunsets hit different. The sunrises hit different. The food that I eat is different. Watching a flower, looking at God's creation, it just hits different. I appreciate it so much more now. And it's like, God woke me up in a way. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy to like put into words, but this year has been a wild ride. It's been really wild. It's had a lot of ups, it's had a lot of downs, but for the most part, I've continued on an upward path. Although I've stumbled, many many times many 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 times through it all god got me god kept me god helps me through everything and i'm just really grateful i was talking with one of my friends who knew me really well in sophomore year of college um before i gave my life to god we were just talking about how much we've grown and reflecting on the past it's like that was like we don't have to talk about the past for real for real but after that conversation i was just like wow like god really has changed my life in such a crazy way and sometimes I'll just kind of like pass it off as normal but I'm like nothing about this is normal this did not have to be my life at all the stuff that I was getting involved in at an early age bro I should not by a logical standpoint I would not be here right now based on the decisions that I made whenever I was younger based on the habits that I was taking on and becoming very attached to highly attached to I should not be here right now and I know that God had his finger on my life he had his hand on my life from day one like that one song the goodness of God by CC wine it's hit so differently for me now because it's so true it's like all my life God has been faithful all my life God has been so good because he didn't leave me where I started he took me and molded me into a way better version of myself. He broke the attachments that I had to feelings of unworthiness and insecurities and self-doubt and self-hate, all of those things. He broke it off of me and he gave me so much more than I could have ever asked for or wanted or thought of even asking for. Like God's grace is a gift. He did not have to give it to me, but because he loves me so much, he said, you know what, I understand that like, this is the life that she used to live, but I'm redeeming you. I bought you with a price. And so don't let me down. But if you do let me down, I got some grace for that too. <laughs> and I just love him so much. I just want to give him a big hug. I want to give Jesus a big hug because they've changed my life. He has changed my life. God has changed my life. I don't even know if it's politically correct, politically, politically correct to say they, but God has changed my life. And I'm a walking testimony. Like if you knew me two years ago, if you know me now, 
different girl completely different ball game like hardly recognizable whenever i look at like my old pictures my old videos all that stuff and i'm just really really grateful today's scripture verse is taken from genesis 131 it says god looked over everything he had made and it was so good he created everything right i was created by god you was created by god these birds these flowers i have right here were all created by god and he looked at it and it's his masterpiece and he said it's very good so i spent my whole life thinking that i wasn't very good thinking that i wasn't worthy thinking that i wasn't lovable thinking that i was just all of these negative things and god was like bro i made you to be so very good and i love you so much and I did not mess up whenever I made you. You may be insecure about that, but I'm gonna help you to learn to love it because I made you that way. God loves us dearly and more than we can ever imagine. If it were not for God's grace, I would not be here right now. And he's really taken me, he's allowed me to see myself the way that he sees me, see me as his beloved, precious daughter, something that he created that was very, very good. I've never looked at myself and thought that before. Whenever I first came to God, I was really just searching for myself. I didn't even intentionally come to God. For summer of 2022, I was searching for my identity. I didn't know who I was. And I had just gone out of another relationship and I was just like, bruh, these relationships keep on failing. Like, what is wrong with me? Is there something wrong with me? Because at this point, something's gonna be wrong with me. But after I just was done with dating for a little bit, I was like, all right, Tyler, time to find yourself, time to start working out, time to start eating healthier, time to start, you know, reading your Bible a little bit. I was not even trying to find God, bro. but God found me in the search of me finding myself. Who better to find my identity in than the God who created me, than the one who literally knew me before the foundation of the earth? Ephesians 1 4 says even before the foundation of the world God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes He did not have to do that, but because of his unending love for us. He said, you know what? I love her so much. I love him so much I love them so much that I'm gonna make the ultimate sacrifice so that they have the opportunity to be with me again for eternity in heaven I didn't know that I was getting a father whenever I came to God. I didn't know that I was getting a best friend, a therapist. He knows my deepest, darkest secrets, and I really just began to develop that intimacy with him. Also, to know God is to know his character, to spend time with him, to really understand that he does not want to send us to hell. He does not want to condemn us forever. That is not who God is, but God is a God of love. And I started to really understand what that means from a personal standpoint. I've heard it, but whenever I actually began to make it personal to me, I was like, okay, let me figure this out. If he's my friend, that means that I can talk to him. That means that I don't have to be so professional with him, like in my prayers and stuff like that. I don't have to be like, okay, Mr. Sir, God, Sir, so la 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 and say all this like holy big words, all this stuff like no. It's not like that and I've really learned to become more conversational in my prayers and I think that that's, that's really helped my prayer life as well and just like becoming closer to God. It's an amazing relationship and I'm really grateful but there's a huge difference between knowing God and knowing of God and before I knew of God, I knew that he was good but now that I know him I know for a fact that he is good, that he is loving, that he is caring, that he loves me more than I can ever love myself. And that's even crazy to think about. You know that one song, POV by Ariana Grande? I used to love listening to that song before, like I actually loved myself for real, cause I just was so in love with the idea of loving myself the way that somebody else loved me. And like the relationships that I was in, I was like, I wanna see myself the way that you see me. Like, why did you choose me? Why do you wanna be with me? I didn't know why, I didn't know my worth. So I was just like, why does this man wanna spend time with me? I was like, I don't know what I did to deserve this, you know? But same thing with God. Like, I want to love myself the way that God loves me. I want to love others the way that God love it, loves others. I want to see myself through the perspective of God's eyes. And I asked that in prayer. I said, God, like, help me to see myself the way that you see me. Or show me what you see in me that you saved me from living a life that was void of purpose. And from really saving myself from the things that could have really been the end of me he like snatched me up he said you know what no that's my daughter she's not going down there okay i'm gonna snatch you up girl like an eagle swoops down from the sky that's how god came to save me 
he has shown me that he loves me so deeply and through developing a stronger prayer life i've realized that there's nothing that i should ever hide from god there's nothing that i should ever feel guilty about i should talk to god about it because a lot of times we think that whenever we sin we have to hide from god and like try to fix it and then come to god afterwards but i feel like that's what the devil wants you to think he wants you to think that you have to do some work on yourself and then come to god but that's not how it works at all like god actually wants to be that person to help you you don't have to be independent in this relationship yes i can do it but god can do it so much better yes i am strong but god is so much stronger so let me ask him let me come to him even whenever i do my workouts and i'm doing school work and all those things i'm like god like please help me and the littlest things like god what should i wear today god you know this person is this for me is this relationship for me is this person someone that i should acquaint myself with i really do ask god about everything because what is it in the bible it says is bring all of your cares and concerns to the feet of jesus so i was like all right let me put this into practice even the smallest details he knows me better than i know myself there is no greater love than the love of god and we don't have to do anything to receive god's love we don't have to perform to receive god's love one thing that i love about genesis 131 is the fact that before adam and eve were commissioned by god to do any type of work before they did anything noteworthy or meaningful god said that they were very good they didn't have to perform in order to receive that blessing and to say like oh i am good enough because or you are good enough because you did x y and z god is like you are good enough simply because I created you and I said so. so. Whenever a sense of unworthiness or rejection creeps in, just remind yourself that God created you and after he did so, he said, you are very good. This is very good. Everything that I have created is very, very good. But to stay rooted in our word because society will really tell you that you're not good enough because you don't have this degree, you don't have this car, you don't make this amount of money. Society will tell you that you're not good enough because of a bunch of materialistic things. But we are good enough simply because God says so, simply because we were created in God's image. And so all the times that I was like, oh, I'm not beautiful enough, all the times that I just had all these negative thought patterns, God was like, girl, if only you knew how I saw you, if only you knew how much I loved you, you would stop settling for this bare minimum love this temporary love that you're finding in these little relationships if only you knew that there was so much more out there waiting for you this whole world of peace and love waiting for you you would not be settling i got tired of running and i stopped running and i was like you know what god let me try this whole god thing out did that and now we're here <laughs> now we're here and we still have so much more to go but I'm grateful for where God has brought me in this current position. We must remind ourselves that we are precious to God despite of our accomplishments or lack thereof. We don't have to accomplish anything in order to be loved by God. We are loved by God simply because we are God's children and he created us. So breathe, slow down. What are you seeking after? What are you striving towards? I just pray that you will live for the approval of Christ before you try to find that approval in other people. I pray that you will find the peace that you're looking for in God rather than in things of the world. And I also pray that you will find your identity as a precious, beloved child of God. So my challenge for you today, it's my call to action, is that you will continue to seek God and put him first, prioritize him, and try praying more conversationally. Try to talk to God as if he was just a friend. Try to include God into more areas of your life and just invite him into more of you. It's like a two-way relationship. God will never force himself upon us, but we have to give him an open door. And if we do give him an open door, he will come in and he will change our little shack into a heavenly palace if we just allow him to work just let him cook bro just let god cook and he's going to change you into a way better version of yourself than you can ever see from reading a bunch of self-help books okay <laughs> so i'm gonna end it there because i'm tired of talking i've been recording for like two hours but anyways god is good and 
this podcast it's a work in progress okay i don't have it all together yet but we're gonna get there eventually so thank you everyone who has tuned in today thank you for allowing me to speak to you thank you for showing me so much love and support and i'm really grateful for the beginning of this journey and let me know if y'all have any topics you want me to discuss i'll definitely be open to hearing suggestions and all that but hope you guys have a happy holidays i love y'all very very much and i will talk to you in the next podcast all right love you guys bye <laughs>